Hello, you little monsters. This is the little monster girl, Desi, coming at you. And today, I got a brand new story time for you guys. But before we get started, I'd like to apologize that I didn't get to last month's monster bite and that I kind of didn't get to read aloud another creepypasta. I had a bit of trouble trying to find one. Well, you might have been able to get to those things if you didn't let yourself get distracted so much. On top of that, you keep on putting things on your plate so you never get anything done. And let's not forget all the stress Amino's been putting you through. You really should just delete that thing. At least with Tapas, you have a chance of getting paid. But then again, your art's not as popular on there as it is on Amino. Now you see, this, this is why I don't let you in the video with me. This shiz right here. And once again, you're grounded from the video. And with that aside, let's get on to the story. Now, as most of you may know, I live with my mom currently. But our story takes place back when I used to live with my dad. During the summertime, I tend to sleep a lot during the day because of how hot it is. And either way, I'm already a night owl, so I'm usually awake all night anyways. So you can kind of imagine how hard it is to go grocery shopping when you can't drive, and you pretty much have to walk everywhere. And being a night owl, that means you have to do it at nighttime. Luckily, where my dad lives, there's actually a Winco pretty close to his house. About a 15 to 20 minute walk. However, me being a skinny, small girl who looks to be about in her 14 to 16 years, my dad obviously isn't comfortable with me walking alone at night. And of course, not all the time, he's awake during the night so he can't walk with me. So of course, I always make sure to bring a knife with me as well as one of our dogs. My dad has two dogs. One of them is Husky and Pug Mix named Hercules, named after the dog from Sandlot. And we also have a pit bull puppy named Monster, who despite his name is actually a big cuddle bug. However, I'm not very strong, so as much as it would be intimidating to walk up to a girl with a pit bull, I always opt to bring Hercules with me. Hercules is, well, he's an old dog, but he is protective of both me, my dad, and my brother. So if a stranger walks up to us and he knows for a fact that they don't have good intentions, he does bark and growl and try to bite at them. So I always feel safe whenever he's with me. Overall, I actually really like walking at nighttime. It can really clear your head, especially how pretty summer nights can be. And I've gotten used to walking to the store at nighttime with a dog by my side. However, this night in particular, walking with the dog to the store kind of caused a bit of trouble. Now, I didn't get in trouble for having a dog in the store by the employees. They all knew Hercules and knew that he was a well-behaved dog, and that he was in fact a service dog. However, while no one else actually asks about him, there was one lady who decided to get very aggro about it. And after I finished up all my shopping without a hitch, I decided that it was time to go home. So with dog in tow, I decided to walk out the store. But as I was coming out the front door, a lady drove up in her car and rolled down her window with an angry voice. She told me, You can't have a dog in the store. It's not allowed. It even says so on the sign. And when I tried to tell her that he was a service dog, I didn't even get a word out before she said, And don't even give me any of that bullcrap that he's a service dog. I can see that he's not wearing a vest. Don't you dare lie to me. And I clamped my mouth shut. Being an already socially awkward and anxious girl, I got a little bit scared that she was going to do something. However, all she did was yell at me and tell me that the next time I brought the dog in with me, that she was going to report me to the manager. And then she drove off in a huff. Luckily, while this didn't scare me to the point where I felt like I was going to cry, at the time, and in the moment, I did feel like I had done something wrong. But when I told my dad this, he told me that the woman was in the wrong. And in fact, that people aren't supposed to ask if a dog is actually a service dog. And they're not supposed to get mad if they're not wearing the vest either. He told me that the lady had no right to yell at me, and that I have nothing to be afraid of. And after hearing that, I decided to just bring the dog whenever I went to the store 
in case that lady ever went there again, just to spite her. Because yeah, I'm not going to have some random ass lady tell me that I can't bring my dog with me for protection. She has a freaking car. I don't. So she can go and choke. This next story could have ended a bit differently if I didn't have both my dad and a dog with me at the time. This was another night where I decided that I wanted to go to the store. My dad, who was fully awake at the time, decided to go with me considering the dogs needed to go out for a walk before bed. So bringing along Hercules and Monster, me and my dad walked down to Winco together. But when we got to the store, something sort of happened. I wouldn't say that it was a big thing that raised all the alarm flags, but it was a little bit weird. There was this guy who was obviously as high as a kite, just sitting there at the front door. My dad, knowing that the dogs would get a little bit rowdy, especially Monster, about being together in the store, decided to wait outside with them and let me go in by myself. Unbeknownst to me, this guy was just making a bunch of babbling and had been sitting there for an hour, and had been asked to leave multiple times, since he wasn't going to buy anything. My dad, who had saw all this, was waiting outside for me, as the guy was escorted out. Of course, not knowing all of this, I walked out of the store with my arms full of bags, and this guy walked up to me and started babbling to me. Now I'm the type of person to stop and listen whenever somebody's talking to me, or whenever I hear somebody talking when it's been quiet. It's just because it catches my attention. So standing there a bit frozen, this guy keeps babbling the same thing over and over again, pretty much saying that he would need to sell me this chicken McThingy for a dollar because he didn't have any money and it was cold, so he didn't want to wait outside. Me not, r not really knowing how that that cannot talk. Me not really knowing what to do, kind of tried to walk away. Seeing my dad not too far away, he obviously got up and was already walking over to us. So I quickly hid behind him, the dogs slightly growling. And quickly, the four of us made a hasty retreat taking a slightly different route to go home than what we had taken to get there. And as we were walking and talking about how weird that was, we actually heard sirens of a police car going up the road, all the way up to Winco. Man, we could only guess that this guy was just creating more of a disturbance, so we guessed that he was probably going to get arrested. I don't know if this guy was dangerous, but I definitely know that if my dad hadn't been there and hadn't brought both of the dogs with him, then I probably would have gotten caught up in that. But with all things considered, these are definitely experiences that I'll be remembering for a while. Because Satan knows there are definitely a lot of crazy people in the world, whether they're high as a kite or just angry at you for no apparent reason. Did you guys enjoy the video? If you liked it, please like, share, or subscribe if you haven't already. And leave a comment down below if you want to. And don't forget to hit that bell button, that way you can be notified whenever I upload. That being said, I'm really sorry I didn't manage to upload those other two videos. I'm not quite sure about the monster bites, but I definitely know that a few of you enjoy the creepy pastas. Last month was really stressful for me and my family as well as a few other things that I don't really want to get into because I'll just end up ranting. But if you guys want to help support the channel, I have both my commissions open and I've even put up some new rebubble designs. But if you don't have the money for those, you can also go on to Taspis and donate free ink. It would really help out the channel, but it's not required. And while I'm practicing doing small animations, I hope I can put out more story times as well as more art for you guys. Because sweet baby Jesus on Easter Sunday, it really makes me happy when I know that you guys enjoy something I've made. Oh, and before I forget, at the very end of the video, I'll include a tiny speed paint for the rebubble design I did. And with all that said and done, I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye!
Ok, quick thing. On Amino, a user asked, how long have you been doing art for? And I think the most valid answer is, I'd say about 18 years. My earliest memory of drawing was from 3 to 4, so yeah, I guess 18's a good guess. <laughs> I've been only doing digital art for about, um, I think now it would be about 3 years maybe? And no, I don't use any kind of tablet. I don't have the money for that. On top of that, I don't have a computer either. I literally use my phone for absolutely everything. And you can find everything I use on the phone in the description. And with that said, if you have your own questions, leave them down in the comment below. And I'll try to answer one in the next video.